Hey, welcome to another Inventor tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to use the split function and also we're going to use the direct function. Both of them really useful when manipulating single solid parts uh, into multiple solids and also uh, changing uh, measurements and moving faces back. So let's jump on in and see where we end up. So welcome. Uh, I've jumped straight on in and started a new part. I do have a new function that allows me now to zoom into the various different parts of the uh, of the screen. Uh, it also gives me the ability to perhaps draw a, an arrow so that uh, we can see which uh, functional uh, functions that I'm using, um, and then I can just zoom back out. Um, so hopefully this will help uh, understanding a bit more. So first thing I'm just going to do is I'm just going to create uh, my standard, uh, I'm going to create a, a, basically a two dimensional rectangle. Uh, for this one I'm going to go uh, rectangle two point center uh, and I'm going to center it directly over the origin um, and then I can dimension it uh, as I have been doing in my other tutorials. I'm not going to worry about the size too much at the moment. Um, I'm going to finish my sketch, zoom out slightly, uh, just rotate round. I'll do my extrude. I'm going to extrude it 100 mil. So I'm going to use my shell function. Uh, for those of you who can't remember, uh, I can zoom in. I'll show you where it is. So it is here. Um, and I'm going to use that function to shell out the inside of the box. So I've shelled it out with a 2 mil uh, wall thickness. Um, this uh, I'm now going to put a basic, I'm going to just put straight a plane on the top of the box. So just to find the plane that I need. So I'll have to just use like so. Um, and I'm going to start a new two dimensional sketch on this new plane. And I am going to project the outside geometry uh, of the box. I'm then going to offset that geometry and I'm going to then dimension it afterwards so that I know that I'm going to offset it at 15 mil. Finish the sketch and then I'm just going to extrude that try that one again. I'm going to extrude might zoom in a little bit there you go and I'm just going to extrude it uh, 5 mil um, and I'm going to join it to the other box and therefore what I've now got is a nice uh, lipped edge fo over uh, folding on the inside. I will hide that work plane, turn the visibility off. Um, I'm now going to create another work plane uh, from the base. I'm just going to move it up uh, about halfway, so about 50 mil up. Should be minus 50 mil. So we're now going to split the solid at this plane, this new work plane too. So the split function, I'll zoom in um, and then I'll draw my arrow. This is the split function that we're going to be using found within the modified panel. Uh, so we'll uh, left click on the split function. Um, we, uh, we're going to select the, the tool first, which is our plane that we're going to want to uh, use our, where it's going to split the solid. Uh, you may find that yours is set up with faces. Um, this is, we want to split the solid, so we're going to choose the solid selection. It's currently set off. If you click it, it will then select uh, on, and it will then give us this behavior 
uh, section here. Um, and we can either choose to keep both sides, default side or the other opposite side. We're going to keep both sides um, and we can click OK. And now you'll find that we've got two solids, the bottom and the top, solid two and solid three. Uh, and like normal, we can turn the visibility off if necessary so that we're only working on one uh, solid itself. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to create an internal flange for some reason, so it's manufacturing process. Um, so we are going to start a two-dimensional drawing on uh, this work plane. I'm going to project the internal or internals of the box. I'll then offset that, say, by uh, three mil. And then I'll finish the sketch. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude it just that one little section uh, and I'm going to extrude it uh, down so that down and I'll go 15 mil down uh, for this bit I want to set it as a new solid is our output um, we'll use the combine function later on to combine all this stuff together but uh, for the moment we're going to just create a new solid and then we'll just click OK. Uh, I want to switch that drawing visibility back on because I'm going to use it again now. And I'm going to extrude the same section. This time I'm going to extrude it vertically up 15 mil. Um, and again, I'm going to keep it as a new solid. Um, once I'm happy, I'm going to click OK. Now, uh, one thing that we want to do is we want to push back these top faces just by a small amount um, at, so that when the top comes to latch on over the over the uh, bottom then it there's a there's a slight bit of play in there which will give it an opportunity to line up and locate properly and for that we can use our direct function um, and I, that is up here and it is the direct and it's going to it gives us various different options to do but one of them is we can push back faces by a certain amount uh, it's found within the modified panel so we'll select the direct function and we get this sort of little pop up here uh, we can move size scale we're going to be using the size function so we're going to change the size of the geometry and we're going to go around and select the faces that we want to push back. Um, just uh, spin around and highlight them blue. Um, and then what we can do is we'll grab the little uh, golden arrow, push it in the right direction or the direction we want to go move backwards. And then we get this dimension box here that we're going to put in. I'm going to put in minus 0 0.25 mil. Um, and that has pushed all those faces back by that 2.5, uh, 0.25 mil. Um, we will then turn off all of our various, or turn the visibility off of all of our work planes and, uh, and our uh, extrusions and that we need. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all these three sections uh, into, into one solid body. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to select my combine function and then I'm just going to go around and I'm going to select the three solids. Um, our output is going to be in a join, which is fine. Click OK. And now the we have it as a single solid item. We will turn on the visibility of the top box and it's really hard to see. Um, but what we can do is we can go over to our uh, view window um, and we can select our over in this visibility panel. We can, if you look at the drop down, we can quarter, half, three quarter, end or whatever view section. So I'm going to choose a half section. I'm just going to come to one face, click and hold, push back and then just click the tick 
and then if I rotate around and zoom in, you can actually see there is a tiny little gap between the um, uh, solid one, the top, and solid two, the bottom, and it goes all the way around. It's really, really useful, um, this function, this direct function, when thinking about 3D printing certain objects, uh, and you just want to push back slightly. Um, but it's also useful if we're doing mul you know, multiple uh, modeling parts and you want some degree of gap between them. It can be really, really useful for those as well. Uh, it, to get back to the original, we just end section view. And there we have it, uh, a simple uh, two-piece box that locates together with a little flange on the air, on the top. Um, and that is it. So hopefully that's been useful for you. And I'll see you again in another Inventor tutorial.